Hi there, I'm on Saturday morning, it's here on MX24. My name is Benedict Tools. It's time to bring you playmakers uh, running from now till the hour of nine. Everything you need to know in the world of football, starting from Ghana to Africa, and then, well, Ghana is part of Africa, so to the rest of the continent. And then we'll hit uh, the uh, major European leagues. Specifically, we'll pay attention to the English Premier League. Well, so today, this is what we are going to do. First, we'll look at uh, South Africa's uh, Patrice Motsepe, uh, who is now the new president of the Confederation of Afghan Football after being elected unopposed yesterday at the General Assembly, which was held in Ethiopia. Also, we'll touch on the issue of uh, the uh, former Kumasa Santikoto coach, Max Okunedu, uh, who has refused to return his Toyota Fortuna uh, vehicle uh, the club handed him whilst uh, he was coach uh, of the uh, club. We, now we understand that he has done so. Uh, we'll look at the dynamics of uh, what's been happening between coaches and clubs uh, when it comes to termination of contracts. Well, on the international stage, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, both for the very first time since 2005, will not be in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League because uh, this week, Barca were kicked out, same as Juventus, where they play their respective uh, club football. Also, uh, on the international stage, we'll hit England, where Arsenal and Mikel Ateta, they will come to Tottenham Hotspur to the Emery Stadium tomorrow. Of course, that's the top liner uh, in the English Premier League this weekend, and it is the London Derby. So these and many more coming up here in the next 60 minutes on MX24. This is Playmakers. The show, as always, is interactive, so you can get through to us on our WhatsApp line, which is 0592 8960010592 Later, we'll activate the phone line so you can get to interact with me. So the numbers uh, to call when we activate the phone lines uh, are 0550, so 0550-3315111, 0550-3315111, or 0204-730481. 0204-730481. That'll be later. So just write the number. I'm not saying you should call now. Just write the number somewhere. So when I activate the phone lines, you can get to interact with me here on the show. My name is Benedict Ousu. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We'll go for a short break. When we come back, you hear from our analyst and then we'll zoom into our discussion. Don't go away. The show is probably brought to you by Betway. So if you're an investor out there and you want to place your bet, the only place to do that uh, is uh, Betway. You can pick your phone. Uh, you can also do it on your laptop, wherever you are. Uh, it's so easy to place your bet on Betway. They have good odds. And as soon as you win, they pay your money to you via Momo. So uh, this morning, uh, of course, I'll be telling you more in terms of uh, how to do that uh, and also the matches uh, that are coming up that you can place your bet on at Betway. But we have to start uh, from the continent and yesterday was uh, the CAF General Assembly which was held in Morocco and at that assembly South Africa's Patrice Motsepe uh, became the next president of the Confederation of African Football. He's 59 years old and of course uh, he uh, went unopposed so it was by acclamation that uh, after the Three other candidates that were uh, hoping to go into election with him or withdrew their candidacy. So it wasn't Patrick, uh, it wasn't the other candidates alone that withdrew their candidacy. We also had a uh, Ghana Football Association president Keto Kruku uh, withdrew his candidacy uh, from the executive uh, committee election. So now we have the uh, setup of the FIFA Council. Other decisions were taken as well uh, yesterday at the uh, Congress. Now we're going to have five. Yes, we're going to have five vice presidents of CAF instead of uh, the initial three that uh, was there. So uh, these are discussions that we're going to have here on the show. Uh, I'm privileged uh, to be joined, as always, uh, by my man, James Sowa. James, uh, thanks so much for joining me on the show this morning. Thank you very much, Benedict, and good morning to our viewers across the country. Mm. Now we have a new uh, president for the Confederation of Afghan Football, something to be excited about. Yes, certainly, uh, because when you look at the issues uh, pertaining to the uh, three years uh, tenure of um, uh, Ahmad Ahmad, it has been marred by uh, a lot of uh, controversies. Um, 
from the beginning it was um, uh, embezzlement to corruption and then mm -hmm. the nepotism by as he, he's been accused and subsequently charged um, uh, by uh, cast but i think um, with the billionaires coming on board that's patriots on board i think it's a fresh of uh, uh, a breath of fresh air uh, when you look at how he managed uh, Mamelodi's sundowns, how he managed them to move from, uh, 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 how, if I may put it, uh, quote and unquote, a little uh, club in South Africa to one of the giants in African football. I think um, it's a step in the right direction. But what I'm skeptical and very uh, afraid of is the fact that if he won't be manipulated by uh, FIFA president, Juan Infantino, because we all know the role Infantino played in this our election. Uh, as to whether it was free and fair, it's also another uh, topic for uh, another uh, discussion. But I think um, it, 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 he'll, he'll be a good candidate for uh, African football because when you look at the points that he outlined mm -hmm. uh, prior to the election or the popular acclamation, I think it, it's a very laudable idea uh, to support him for because we, as I, I, I've been a proponent of a uh, football development that is the youth section of our, our game and it's one of the key or uh, major highlights of his campaign. So if he's able to um, deal with it and he's able to have people on board who support this idea, I think uh, African football. We will go back to its glory days. Mm, I mean, no, normally these are the same things that you hear uh, when there is a new president. You remember in 2017, Ahmad, when he came on board, Fresh also talked about the fact that uh, he was going to see through some reforms uh, at the Confederation of African Football and things were going to be done differently as we're used to the, in the era of Isa Hayatu. But that didn't happen. And uh, I mean, we are singing the same song today. Are you very, very hopeful uh, of uh, what to come in the future? Well, um, for one thing that I'm certain of is the fact that uh, when it comes to TV rights, when it comes to TV rights with regards to the African competition, uh, I know it will be done well because um, hmm. he doesn't need those, um, excuse me to say, kickbacks to award a contract to someone uh, he knows because he will get something out of it because, he, hey, look, he is the ninth uh, richest person on, uh, uh, in Africa. But that, that aside, um, yes. I think we've paid leave services to some of these uh, manifestos when it comes to football in Africa for far too long. And at the end of the day, they promise very, they promise much, too much, they deliver, deliver very little. Um, it, it's really uh, sad, but I, I'm just praying that uh, with time, he'll be able to leave, deliver everything that his manifesto, even if he's unable to finish everything within the four years, which I doubt it will be done within the four, four years. I think the structures and the systems must be put in place for such things to continue, even if he's unable to be elected in the, uh, for the second term. Pay, pay your remarks. You sound very confident uh, as to what he can do uh, to lift the level of uh, football on the continent. Has it got to do with his track record uh, in uh, the investment he's done in football? Um, I think uh, to be able to boldly say that one person or uh, so, so uh, one uh, professional will be able to deliver on a promise that made it's all dependent on the track record. And when you look at his track record uh, for youth development, I think it's, it speaks volume. Uh, when you look at where Sundowns were about five, six years ago and how they become a household name. In South Africa, we all know you've been in South Africa a couple of times. When you go to South Africa, the common football names you hear are the Kaiser Chiefs and the other teams that are being well loaded when you go to South Africa. And not just South African League, but also uh, in the African uh, club competitions as well. So I think the track record speaks for itself. He's an astute businessman, uh, he knows what it takes for to see a business thrive. And one of the issues with African football is that it has taken us so long a time to see the commercial aspect of football. And I think one, that's one of the major things he's bringing on board. All right. Uh, mm. I'm so much 
and choose for it. Okay, so James, uh, you hold on for me. We have uh, Sami Samalapia has joined me as well as uh, Lukman Evergreen. Do we have Kofi Esichue on? Okay, so Kofi, Kofi is here to join us, uh, but we have Sami. Sami, are you there? Kofi, Kofi is on yeah, as well. Yeah, good okay. morning, Benedict. Yeah, good morning, Sami, and also good morning to you, uh, Lukman. Okay, uh, Lukman is, uh, is here to respond, so let me come to you, Sami. Uh, what do you also make of uh, the new uh, president of uh, CAF, Patrice Motepe? Right. Um, good morning to all our viewers. Um, I think um, uh, first thing, I'll, f one thing that I would like to touch on is um, uh, when he was elected and he said uh, his first statement was that we should focus on the positives, positives. regardless of whatever has happened in the past. And for me, it tells you that um, it tells you his focus, because in the past, just like Soa said, we've, we've, we've had so many issues. When Isaiah was in office, he left, Ahmad Ahmad came, we've had so many issues. But um, here is a man coming in for the first time, going on old post, and then he's saying that, listen, whatever has happened in the past, let's put it behind our, 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 I mean, behind us, and then focus on the positive. It tells you what he wants to do for Africa football. It tells you what... I mean, what his de I mean, determination is about. Just like what Sawa said again, he's a well astute businessman. And so coming in, I, I, I only hope that the people around him, just like um, um, Ahmad, uh, sorry, um, Ahmad Jupinik, Aisha Johansson, and all those people up there, I think they will help him to get the best for Africa football because it's been a long, long time that um, we've seen the best of Africa football in the past, and he coming in and the way manner he has branded um, Mamelodi Sundowns, the investment that he has made, the sponsorship that they are put attracted for the club. I think coming in, we'd like to see the same thing for Africa football. He has promised so many things and so many things that I mean he wants to do for Africa football. So for me, his first statement tells me that he's going to be a very good leader, but it's all boiled down to the people that are surrounded. I mean that are, I mean, have surrounded him. And so my only hope and belief is that whatever that he has put in it on paper, he's going to implement that for Africa football. So that indeed, I mean, we'll all want to say, when he, whenever he's not in office, we'll point back and say, all the things that we are seeing today is because of, I mean, Patri uh, Patrice... Uh, Motsepe. Uh, Motsepe. Okay. Both, yeah, I mean, all those people have done their best, but let's hope that this man coming in from nowhere, he has been given the chance that I hope that he will do his best for Africa football. Okay. I'll come back to you, Sami. Let me quickly go to Lukman. Lukman, uh, one of the key things that he talked about that he will do was uh, the partnership with FIFA and other uh, governing bodies. I mean, does this give clear indication of what we all saw uh, prior to this election where the FIFA president played a key role? I mean, some have said that it looks like uh, we've sat down as a continent and have allowed... Uh, the FIFA president to come in and dictate to us. Okay, so uh, Lukman is not, uh, can't hear me at the moment. So let me go back to uh, James. James, I mean, we'll come to the local issues briefly, but for, for you, where, from, for, from where you sit, does it look like the FIFA president is dictating to us, uh, you know, in terms of our football and what we have to do? Because, I mean, the, the withdrawals came to many as a surprise. Well, um, we all know uh, what I, I, I have so far uh, tried not to use the word uh, puppet in any of my discussions <laughs> or dialogue when it comes to the election. But I think uh, in a way we are being forced to use such words because mm. we realize um, the bidding that Infantino did um, for Patrice. Um, so as I, I, I stated in my earlier submission, um, I think it, it, it's a bad uh, precedent to allow ourselves to be manipulated when it comes to uh, election. Uh, as to whether it was free and fair, uh, it, it's, it's another, uh, it's a broad discussion that we, we, we can have all day long. But I think it doesn't augur well for African football because for far too long we've been, we've allowed ourselves to be manipulated by the Western world when it comes to elections. And uh, football should not be seen as such, um, we should be able to uh, uh, elect, nominate, or point out who we want 
which feel are most suitable to lead the uh, the realms of football when it comes to Africa, uh, the African terrain. But it's rather unfortunate that we had a, a whole FIFA president doing the bidding of uh, a candidate. It doesn't speak well. And, and I must say, uh, Infantino himself doesn't come with a clean hand because we all know sir, some allegations that has been labeled against him over mm -hmm, the course of mm -hmm, his yeah. uh, reign as a FIFA president. So I think it's the downside of... Um, of the election, but this doesn't take anything away from uh, uh, the qualities that Patrice possesses. But I think it, it's it's on the downside when you ask me. Okay, so I'll come back uh, to the other guys and talk about uh, the CAF elections and other issues coming from that one. But uh, James, let's finish up on a, a usual discussion when it comes to the Ghana Premier League. Now, Ligon Cities have brought in. Adebayo, you know I nearly said Emmanuel Adebayo. Victoria Adebayo. Victoria Adebayo. I mean, th this is good. I mean, if you're a Legon City's fan, you should be very, very excited. Well, um, first and foremost, uh, we all we always uh, cringe and talk back and get very bad about the fact that uh, the most prized assets that we have in the league are always living for greener pastures mm -hmm. elsewhere. But here lies the case. Victorian lights up the league in his two and a half uh, seasons that he spent with Inter Allies. Uh, the last season that was abrogated due to the uh, coronavirus, he, he was exceptional. He stood toe to toe with Yaya Mohammed for the Golden Boot prior to the cancellation of the league. We all know his qualities. He has dazzled us with uh, superb football. And I wish Akka Asofo uh, was able to snap him. But uh, we all know for a fact that financially, Akka Asofo are not in good uh, position to sign a player like Victoria Adibaya because he is a full package. But having him back in our league uh, will only go a long way to stamp how interesting the league has become and how... Uh, 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 mm facilitating it, 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 it will look in the coming days. Uh, and for, oh boy, for him to go to Ligon Cities, uh, when you look at the kind of signings they've already done, yeah. I think they are trying to build a, di a dynasty there. Uh, mm. If they are able to hold, I think right now the, the, uh, the goal is not to go down for Ligon City. Yeah. And then next season, they will unleash themselves on the top. And we're going to challenge for the title. Challenge. Okay. But, Certainly. But, mm. So I think it's a, it's a very good Okay, so it's a good deal. Uh, for, for those of, uh, for, for the benefit of those who do not know who Caleb Amankwa is, the new acquisition uh, for Accra Hatifuk, Accra Hatifuk, the defender, uh, please tell us something about him. Well, Caleb Amankwa, we all know, started uh, as a, 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 a player from uh, the Wafa Junior ranks. Mm. He moved to the, to the summit of the team. He was one of their best uh, right backs, or he was one by, by the time he was at Wafa, he was, if not the, 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 the first or the, the top two, he was one of the top two right backs in the system. Then he got snapped up by Adriana Stars. Um, he went there, life wasn't that good. Um, his performance wasn't that, uh, uh, as we, as, wasn't as we saw during his days with uh, Wafa, but. We all know he's got a very, very, very good uh, uh, defending abilities. He's good in the air, brilliant with the ball at his feet. We all know he's an academy boy. So up to the extent that when he went to Indiana, he was converted into a center back. He was not playing at his uh, favorite or natural right back. He, he, he's an attacking-minded uh, kind of a, a defender and a modern, if I may put it this way, a modern uh, defender. Uh, and he's... he's we asked across the folk, we asked for a center back and we got Caleb Amankwa. We cannot ask for any better uh, option or choice than Caleb because he's one of the best defenders in the system when you look at the last five seasons. So yeah, that he, mm. he got a bit down at Adriana, but he's one of the best we have in the system. So now you have Caleb Amankwa. Who is going to retire to the bench? Is it more Alassane or uh, Arman Nuruzili? Well, uh, Mo Alassan is our assistant uh, uh, captain, and for sentiment's sake, probably he will keep his <laughs> position. And Mo Alassan also coming through the ranks of uh, Wafa, I think he will keep his position. And Nuri Sule will, will have to uh, uh, battle it out for, um, uh, 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 how do you call it, uh, substitution role. But I would rather uh, repair. Uh, 
Caleb with Nuri Sule because I love uh, Nuri Sule's uh, movement. I, lo I love his positioning. Mo Alasa sometimes gets a bit cocky, if I may use that word, and mm. sometimes... Sluggish. Uh, sluggish. Sluggish, yes, uh, for lack of a better word from Kofi. Uh, I think uh, sluggish. And then he... Most of the goals that we've considered, about 80% is from Mo Alasa's um, uh, defending deficiencies, if I may put it that way. Okay. And uh, briefly on... <laughs> the, the big deal uh, of the last uh, how many uh, last uh, ten years, because yes, people have talked about the fact that I, I for once have said, why are people so happy and elated about the fact that we've sold one of our best players in the league for ten hundred and fifty thousand dollars? But on the other hand, if you look at dollars, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 on the other hand, if you if you look at the the deals that have been done for the past 10 years, this stands as one of the best deals on the local front to sell a player for that amount. Well, um, we know Kwame Poku's uh, pedigree. We know his uh, striking abilities. We know how good he is. And it, uh, I must say, admittedly, it's a very wrong time for him to leave the local scene. In as much as I'm happy because... Hey, but they need uh, money. Oh. He, he, he are saying it's a wrong time. time. They, they need money. He says it's a wrong time. <laughs> they they, yeah, they need money to pay much. Uh, we all know... Yes, we all know that the time, the times in which we are in, no fans are allowed in the various stadia. Uh, class are really, really knee jerking at the moment. So uh, it's, it's too good uh, a deal to let it uh, slide. And... Uh, as you rightly said, Kotoko needs that money badly because when you look at their wranglings at the moment, they have some players, about three, four players, yeah, they have to settle after the uh, appeals committee ruled against them and then the Maxwell Konedu saga. So they have a avalanche of debt on their shoulders that they need to clear is ASAP and letting their best player go, it, it, it's a bit sad and it's a bit worrying and also financial wise it makes sense yes now the transfer window is open so it's a good time to even get someone in but when you look at kotoko's um, striking department quite poco a lot so they've scored with the closest being immoral ibrahim who is a defender yeah and has scored just two goals so you can imagine and they are not getting goals from the midfield either so as to whether they will be able to get another potent striker in time mm. for the resumption of the second half is also a, a, another one. Okay. But I think financial-wise, it makes sense. But for the league, uh, the branding and the excitement aspect, it's a very sad for uh, our league because mm. we need such players to ignite the passion. Okay. And finally, before I take leave of you, what do you make of the uh, first half of the season? Well, uh, it's been a roller coaster. We, we, we've seen... We've, not, we've seen uh, uh, better seasons, uh, but certainly it's not one of the worst. Uh, we've seen good uh, football from up and coming, brilliant uh, players all around. It's, um, Karela is doing marvelously well. Uh, we all thought after the sudden demise of the Bangola senator, uh, things would be very bad for them. But it's, it's rather turning out to be, uh, excuse me, in quotes, a blessing for them. Uh, they are sitting pretty well at the summit of the league log. Uh, undefeated, uh, they've lost just one game at home, and uh, they getting points on the road. Something that they usually, uh, it's difficult for them to do. And then when you look at Kumasa Sante Kotoko, yes, things did not go as planned in Africa, but they are turning their season around. And then Accra has four, four coaches uh, in first half of the season. That's unprecedented, though. But um, third on the league log, Kotoko with a game in hand. If they win, Accra has four will be four. So it's it's pretty uh, it's, it's a, a very pretty uh, good position. But my worry is where um, Ashanti Gold are currently occupying because uh, we know they they let go of uh, some of the dead legs. But the player that they are missing currently is Sans Kofi. And then um, well, I'm not so much uh, worried about Interallies, but Liberty Professionals are the shocking uh, club when you look at the bottom of yeah. the league table. But I think we are in for a very good and juicy second half of the season because from the 18th position to, I think, the 
eighth position where Adriana uh, Adriana is currently yeah, occupying. Anything at all can for can for um, uh, go, uh, go uh, to the uh, education. No, no, I see. Uh, also, whatever. Uh, <laughs> mm, okay. All right. So, uh, Kofi. <laughs> We are live on TV. <laughs> Stop the discussion they're having over there. If you can please mute when I come to you, then you are mute for me. So, uh, James, we are making a point here briefly so we can wrap up. James, are you there? Uh, the, 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 yes, I'm here. Ben. Okay, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I, I was saying uh, when you look at the league table from the 18th position all the way to the eighth position, any of the teams, which includes Adriana, Brecum, Chelsea, and 11, uh, Elmina Sharks, oh. can all uh, uh, join the relegation wagon. But it, it will be a very feisty second half of the season when you look at how things are going. And the team to beat in the second half is certainly Dreams FC. When you look at how they've amassed points in a couple of their last six, seven games, they've, they've lost just a game and get a one. And they won the rest. I think that they'll be the team to beat in the second half of the season. But I can't wait to see my darling club, Accra Hatter Foot, for me won this. When we finally get uh, Kwame Prepara, he is the piece of the jigsaw that we'll be waiting for. Mm. All right, especially when uh, you've signed some players as well and you are hoping to land Kwame Prepara. James, thank you so much uh, for joining <laughs> me on the show. <laughs> So that was you. So I've, had, I've got with me Kofi. Kofi is uh, joining us from uh, London. Kofi, how are you this morning? I'm, I'm okay, bro. I'm okay. I'm fine. That's how good. Are you I'm doing yeah, fine. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, you, you've been monitoring. You've been monitoring things out here. Uh, that's why where you are. Uh, yeah, that's let's let's briefly talk about that here. Kwame Pokumu to. The Kwame Poku moved to uh, um, USM audience. What, what do you make of it? Um, Chrissy, thank you so much. It's been a while I saw your face. Um, <laughs> I'm actually, you look good. Um, Kwame <laughs> Poku's move, I, I, should I see it come as a shock to me, honestly, because um, looking at the unprecedented president, times in which we are and, and protocol struggling for money with everything that James rightly said, the, the boardroom wranglings, the, the fights that was... That, Quote and unquote fight that's going on in Kotoko. Even at a point we realized they were struggling to make money to, to, to make the trip to Algeria for their um, Confederations Cup game. So it tells you that Kotoko are in a position where they need financial support. Um, it's time and again we've, we've said that it, it's, it's not right when we, we send the, the best players in our league outside there when um, the league also needs them for, for, for marketing purposes. But it's difficult to stop those things. It's difficult sometimes to to put a break on them. These players are the breadwinners of their families. And at the point in time, you would have to watch them sit in our pastures because we are not really paying well back home in our leagues. And every player would want to, you know, fill their pockets just like they see their professionals or their colleagues who play abroad do. So, yes, Algeria isn't a, a bad league um, um, in terms of the African. When you look at the African terrain, they do well in all the continental um, um, organized games. So, um, Kwame Poku moving the protocol is going to be services, definitely, but that's some cash for them to be able to sort a few things out back home. Mm. All right. So, of course, uh, it's a good one for Kumasi and Tokotoko. Do I have Lukman on? I don't have Lukman. So, Govi, let, let's continue with our conversation. We'll come to... Uh, Lukman, can you hear me? Hello? Kofi, please, can yeah, you... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Kofi, can you please uh, mute your line for me? Uh, so, look, man, first, before we come to uh, Patrice Motepe, what do you also make of uh, the move, Kwame Poku's move uh, from Asante Kotoko to uh, Algiers? Is it too early? As some have said, is, the, um, is he looking at the money? Is the club also looking at the money? Well, um, from the player's point of view, I think it is a very good move for him. Uh, you look at the fact that um, he's going to make some very good money. And uh, for a player at his age, uh, he's currently 21, 22. And we've seen how he's performed very, very well on the local scene. It wasn't a surprise that uh, teams from North Africa were chasing him. Now, uh, my little bit of problem is how players fare, especially from Ghana, when they uh, travel to North Africa. 
But then uh, if you look at the kind of performances he's churned out and you, you look at um, the way he plays and the kind of um, work ethic he has, he should be able to thrive in uh, North Africa. The money is good. The move is good for the player. But on the other hand, you look at Kumasiya Sante Potko. I mean, their main source of goals this season has been Kwame Poku. He scored uh, eight goals this season, seven of them in the Ghana Premier League and one in the Cup Federations Cup. Uh, so uh, to see him leave at this particular point in time, it was quite a bit of a surprise for me. But you also think of it from the point of view that they're going to make some good amount of money. Look, there are a lot of problems for commercial transport for in terms of finances. Uh, like Kofi said, I mean, they, they struggle to raise money to even travel to Algeria for that second leg game against uh, ESRT. So that should tell you that the money is coming at the right time. And let's not forget, they have issues to deal with with their former coach, um, Maxwell Kunebi. So there is a lot of financial um, debt on commercial transport for that they will be needing to sort out. And to be able to do that, I mean, this is some good amount of money coming to them. So it, it is good for the player. It is good for the team. All we can hope is that uh, Kwame Poku goes there and already he's been given a personal car. Uh, it means they want to make sure that everything that he needs, is, he gets it and then he performs for them. Mm. Well, uh, that's, of course, uh, very good for the player's point of view and also for Asante Kotoko. But it's not good for our league because we are losing another star player. Exactly, exactly. Exactly, exactly. For our league, we are, we are definitely losing a star player. I mean, anytime you want to go watch a Kotoko match, um, you, you are thinking of Poku or Fabio Gama. Now, Fabio Poku is not there. Who do you go there to watch? So it is definitely not good for our league. And the fact that um, before he left for Algeria, there was Daniel Lomote for uh, Wafa, who was also scoring, who was also the man for Wafa. He also left. So it tells you that we don't even get to play an entire season without having our key players leaving the league. And that is quite worrying. And it is not just because uh, they don't want to stay. You see, um, the thing is that you look at the amount of money they are earning at their respective clubs here. And for players, I mean, they would definitely want to keep the, the, the Miaga salaries that they are earning here won't really help. And with players that are born outside and then come back say that, look, if you want to make a life out of this footballing career, mm. you don't have to play in Ghana. And so every player wants to leave. I think it is something that um, the leaders of our football would have to take a critical look at. I mean, if we want our league to be back there, to compete with the likes of the USM orders, the ESRT, then we also have to, you know, find a way of um, paying our players very well. Because for now, all we can do is also go out there and then poach some of the best players in other countries. And to be able to do that, then it means you have to pay players very well. So it's, it's quite a dicey situation, but I think this should be left with the top hierarchy of Ghanaian football to find a way of sorting out, get sponsorship, help teams to be able to keep some of the best players. If not, we'll continuously see player exodus, and it's becoming a normal team. Uh, Daniel Lomotin left after just 10 games in the Ghana Premier League, yeah. which is quite I mean, premature. So we have to find ways of paying our players very well. Okay. Well, uh, well um, ben Yeah, ben Sammy, briefly, then we'll go for a break, I then we'll come and continue. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a very quick po uh, point on, on what Lukman... I've just said that the FA has to ensure that um, um, the clubs have to make sure that they get to pay their players very well so that we maintain our best players here. Um, I, 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 stand, I'm, I don't want to, dis I'm not disputing what Lukman is saying, but for how long having the media hammered on this thing? For since Mr. Yantichu was in office, this thing kept on happening. And for me, I don't think, I mean, we, the, I mean, Ghana, the, pre the, the clubs can maintain their best players because the kind of financial power that these North African teams have. We don't have it. We don't have it. A, a Ghana Premier League team can't pay their player 400, 500, 600 cities a, a month. No, it's not going to happen. So what they will do is that whenever that they come in with the money, we can't no, resist no. it. We can't push it away. They, the club themselves, know that they are not doing their best for the player. And so when the player, when immediately the offer comes in, the player likes it or not, he has to move because there's an offer which is better than whatever that he's 
earning here in, in, in Ghana. And, okay. and a, a, a very last one before you leave, I remember when um, Kotoko played Kim Faisal in mm -hmm. Kishima yeah. on Thursday. And this funny story came in that Kwame Poku has been joining the uh, team bus every day for match day. He was not in the team bus. He was rather giving, he was rather sitting in the management, in a, in a management member's car. And it tells you how valuable now Kwame Poku is to the yeah. club. And so I, I'm not trying to dispute what Lukman is saying. So mm -hmm. for me, I don't see our clubs doing that. They don't have the financial power. Okay. No. Okay. For us to do that, it will take us a very, very, very long time before we get there and we can roll okay. through this with, with these, I mean, North African clubs. All right. So Samin, Lukman, and then Kofi, uh, we we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we we'll touch briefly on the Asante Kotoko and then Max Okunedi issue, and then we we'll hit the international scene where Kofi, of course, we'll talk about his team Liverpool, what's been happening by in the UEFA Champions League. They've been able to qualify to the quarterfinals, and I believe Lukman is a Chelsea fan, Sami also is a Chelsea fan, so we'll talk about how well Thomas Tuchel is doing and the, 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 the likelihood that Chelsea may finish second ahead of Manchester United. Stick and say, don't go away. Right, she's still here on Playmakers on MX24. It's really getting interesting uh, with that uh, Kwame Poku uh, subject. But briefly, guys, uh, let's talk about that Max Okunedi issue with Kumasi Asante Kodoko. Yes, now I know it's, re it's been resolved. Uh, the NCC, that's the National Circles uh, Council, came in and, uh, you know, sorted all these out. They asked Max Okunedi to return the Fortuna, which he has done so. And now he says uh, he will take every... I think that Kumasi Asante Kotoko is going to give him. But uh, the statement he released that uh, he wasn't going to return the car until Asante Kotoko fulfills their part of the bargain. And then Kotoko also replied uh, with the fact that, uh, yes, uh, initially when uh, they terminated his contract, they made available 80,500 Ghana cities, which he refused and said he wanted more. Now it looks like Max Okunedu is going to take it. Uh, I'll start with you, Lukman. This... Uh, it's good that uh, they found a way to settle this case because it, it wasn't getting any uh, better in the media where the former coach was coming out with a statement and also the club was replying him. Well, uh, I mean, um, it's, it's quite uh, disgusting if things like that uh, happen. I mean, Kumasi and Santipotko is the biggest club in the country. And so for them to be going back and forth with a former coach over uh, his own entitlements and then... Uh, the fact that he's keeping an official car, that was very, very uh, bad to the media. But then, um, uh, thankfully, uh, that issue has been resolved. Um, the thing is that, you see, um, I've always said one thing about Ghanaian clubs. I think the, the manner in which we manage clubs in the country is really a very big problem. Uh, these are things that should have been sorted out before it even comes out. For a club like Kumasi Asante Kotko, I mean, the, the moment you um, sack the coach, at that point, all his entitlements should have been settled. Even if there wasn't money for it to be settled, then there should be a way of addressing the issue so that it doesn't come out. Now you wait till so the, uh, the, 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 um, the unfortunate thing happens and then you find a way of addressing it. That is, that is quite unfortunate. But uh, I'm, I'm happy it's been dealt with now. Kumasi Asantikotko would have to find a way of settling uh, Maxwell Kunedu. Because at the end of the day, you, you hire coaches, you fire them. You can rehire them again. So you don't have to leave a bad blood between you and a former coach. Which is, and this is not just with Maxwell Kunedu. We saw the same thing with um, C.K. Akuno when he left the web. Uh, money started uh, 
the, the club had to settle him. We saw the same thing with Jethro Zakaria saying there were monies that the club had to uh, pay him. So it tells you that the club might be looking lucrative on the outside world, but inside uh, there are issues that they have to deal with. And so when new coaches are coming, when they hear things like this, it also becomes unattractive to them. And so they, they end up making decisions that, you know what, we, we don't have to join the club, even though it's a big club in Ghana. So for me, we have to find a way of financially uh, matching up the uh, reputation of our clubs in Ghana. And so this issue, now that it's been cleared, uh, we hope everything goes on well, but uh, it's quite unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate on the side of Masa Asante Kotoko. And there is one thing about the Asante Kotoko club this day. I mean, you don't always have to publicly fight issues. Kumasi Asante Kotoko is a big club. Make sure you deal with the issue. If it gets to a point where maybe um, a, a solution wouldn't be a, a reached, that is when you also come out and then publicly state some things, because it, it, it just opened up, uh, up a kind of worms in the club, which is quite uh, un, un, unfortunate. Okay. So for me, this is the real issue. Yeah, they have to be able to deal with some of these things before it, it comes out. Okay. Sami, uh, Lukman just talked about the fact that Asante Kotoko is a big club and shouldn't uh, publicly be, you know, fighting some of these things. But from a different point of view, some have also said that the fact that the coach also came out the club had no option until also come out. Is Sammy there? I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. So I was asking that. Look, look man just made a, a point about how Kotoko is a big club and shouldn't publicly be fighting some of these things. And I'm saying, I'm asking. That some have also said that it was Maxwell Knudu that came out first with this issue. So, for the fact that the coach had come out publicly, the club had no option than to also come out publicly to explain their side of the story. Granted, but I'm saying that the club knew that they were owing Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Maxwell indirectly admitted that the car that he was using belongs to the club. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that the club shouldn't have waited for Maxwell to bring this issue, this issue to the media before they also brought out their side of the story. For me, I think when coaches, I mean, part way with clubs, the necessary things that they have to do to make sure that, yes, the, the, the person is living, we as a club have to focus and make sure that we achieve our target at the end of the season. Settle the issues amicably with the person and so that they will not dent your reputation in the, I mean, in, in the media or in the public space. Maxwell is a legend of this club. He has done so, 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 so much for this club. When he came back, we were all expecting that he would win the league. And that's why people were saying that the season that was truncated, if not because of the corona outbreak, Maxwell was definitely going to, I mean, win the league. But, I mean, I, 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 it, it, it's so appalling. It, it's no good for both sides, Maxwell and them, the club. But I'm saying that they themselves, Maxwell admitted, the club also admitted, but I'm, I mean, just like what you said, I was not expecting, personally, I was not expecting Maxwell to bring this issue into the public speech. But what can you do here? It has already happened. But moving forward, I think that when a coach leaves a club, the club has to ensure that whatever that the, club, the coach needs, he has to be given to. So that when a coach is coming in, because uh, Lukman made a statement, it's happened to Siki Akone, it's happened to uh, Zachary Asen. And now, Maxwell Konedo, is it going to happen to Gazelli or Johnson Smith? Or <laughs> the next coach who is coming, is it going to happen to any of the coach that will come in? Let's make sure that, we, we, I mean, we build a harmony. Even if the person comes and leaves, coaches are hired and fired, and you might not know what the future holds. Now, Maxwell is clubless. You don't know what, maybe if he can, if he will definitely come back to the club. Nobody knows. But when what has happened is not good, and it's not good for the in, image of the club, no, Maxwell can do. When a, club, when a person leaves the club and shows that whatever that he needs or whatever the contract entails, you settle it amicably. Even if you not get it at the spot, let the person understand that maybe in a month or two or whatever it takes, we're going to make sure that, uh, I mean, we're going to pay the money. So you ask yourself, you know, if, 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 if it, it hasn't been for the case of the NCC stepping in to ensure that, now, Maxwell, we know we owe you, but we're going to ensure that we're going to pay you, even though because of the NCC. And now, Maxwell has come. We have now, I mean, I, I mean, send the car to the, to the club. It's not okay. because, if not because of the NCC, I think this issue was going to 
be there forever and ever in the media is going to talk about it and it will it might not it it, okay. it, it, it wouldn't be good for the club and then max all right so for me i think that when a, when a person leaves whatever that the contract entails it has to work along and okay. ensure, ensure that both parties go in a separate way in, in, in that peaceful manner for me well, well said sammy now let, let's uh, switch focus and move from the local scene and, and talk about the english premier league and that's where i come to you kofi kofi please are you still there are you not going to give me a quarter to talk about? Oh, no. You, <laughs> you're out of coverage area. <laughs> well, at least I should, I should have a tackle the match score. Okay, okay. Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead before... Um, you see, I've, I've always said that the, <clears throat> the professionalism of these clubs are always questioned when, mm -hmm. you, when these things happen. At no certain time when um, you part ways with the club, you are supposed to keep um, assets of the club. It goes on everywhere in the world. Once you leave a club, you make sure you leave everything in your possession behind, regardless of how the circumstances um, surrounding your, your, your departure yeah. is. If the clubs have well planned, um, um, uh, when the clubs have everything well planned, this is the, the administrative works of uh, most, most clubs that they fail to do. Whenever a coach comes in, they are given um, a few things, probably an apartment, a car, whatever it is. Once he is leaving, under any circumstance, under any terms, those things should be taken, should be, should be handed over. But we, we always see this wranglings when, when coaches are leaving, when players are leaving. Sometimes they are in a possession of um, apartments, cars, what have you, and they, they fail to, to, to release them because they know that once they release them, whatever is due them from the club isn't going to come. It is because that is how the clubs have, have lacked in professionalism. That is how the clubs have lacked in, in going about doing their things. And I've, sometimes you would you'd be tempted to blame the PRs of the clubs because um, we see players come out and say things about clubs or coaches come out and say things about clubs when um, things are not going too well. But most often, most of these professional clubs fail to, to or refuse or decline to comment, make comments on that. Because at the long run, it, some of them go um, um, to implicate the clubs. Some, some of these things are derogatory to clubs would rather want to do themselves a favor by keeping mute and handling things, you know, privately. But our Ghanaian clubs most often would want to come out there and show balls that, yes, I'm in charge, um, I decide what I want to do. And it's not good for our football. Mm. All right. So let, let's move on and talk about, you know, what, what to expect this weekend in the major European leagues. And, of course, uh, we'll stay with the English Premier League. And Kofi, Liverpool play on Monday just put together what's been happening at the club in recent times for me? Um, it's been um, a very lacrosta um, season so far. It's a very unusual season when you, when you listen to um, people who are really connected to the club. Things are not... They didn't expect things to go this way, um, mostly because excuses have been made with the, the injuries that they've suffered and the readings that have, have, have just been disrupted through that. Because you look at this, the way they started the season, right through to even to January when Felsi Van Dijk was missing. People thought that, yes, this is a team that could still give the league a shot. Until we entered 2021, when things um, started to go on the downward trend, they've, they've lost six games um, at, on, a, on a row at home, which hasn't happened before. But one good thing is that mood hasn't changed at, at Kegbae. When you, when, you, when you watch videos of their training, um, there doesn't seem to be gloom in, in training. Players are smiling. Um, Klopp has made sure that he's kept that... Um, peace in the team. You know, usually when things are going this way, we, we see um, nervy play, we see nervousness from the players, we see knee-jerk reactions and all, but they've kept their calm. Um, they know that these, these boys are competitors, these boys are winners. They, they were winners of the league just last season, a few years ago, they were Champions League winners. So they have that in them. Um, I always have said that this thing has come at a time when the, the front three are also not scoring. They've lost form. So it's affected the team psychologically and all. But I feel they'll bounce back. Good for them is that they have a, a competition outside the Premier League, which is the Champions League, where the, the momentum is different, where psychology is different, where they go out there and they make sure that they, they put the ghost, you know, whatever is hunting them in the Premier League behind them and then go out there and do well. Because, mind you, this is um, an avenue, this is an, an option for them to, to have a shot at the Champions League next season if they fail to, to be in the top four. So, yes, it's, it's a difficult time for Liverpool, but um, I feel that they still have enough games to, to, to secure the top four. Um, looking at the rest of the many of the games left, they, they are playing most of the teams um, below the top ten as compared to their, their, their rivals who are fighting for the top four. So, it's a good time for them to really um, um, group. This Champions League win against Leipzig should be a moral booster for them, should put them um, 
in, in a stead where they, they should feel that, you know what, let's put everything behind us and then give the last 12 or 10, and 10 games um, a very good goal and then see where it ends as coming of the season. Kofi, are you not giving the many Liverpool fans that are watching us false hopes that you finish in the top four? Because it doesn't look like, especially with how Chelsea I, I, I are playing, how Everton, I, how West Ham United are playing now. Um, obviously, the other teams are really playing well. You yeah. don't take any credit to them, you don't take anything away from them. But I'm not giving anybody a false hope. You look at the, the, the remaining games left as compared to Leicester, as compared to Chelsea, as compared to West Ham, even as compared to Tottenham Hotspur, Liverpool are in a favourable position in terms of the games they're going to play. Mm. Most of the teams they are playing, aside, I think Man United are in the lower, are in the second half of the of the table, which is a good thing for them. If judging by the performance against Leipzig, if they should really want to improve on that, take a step further on that, then they should be fine. All right. So Liverpool will be Hampton Wanderers on Monday, and they are going away to the Molino Stadium. So we we'll see how that will go. But uh, you can call us. Uh, we've got some few minutes to end the show. You can also reach out to me here. Uh, the number to call is 05. Uh, it will be on your screen there, but let me quickly run through the number for you. 0550 1511 or 0204. Uh, 730481. Now, let me come to the Chelsea boys. Uh, look, man, are you Chelsea or Manchester United? United, yeah. You are United? United. I, I, I can't support Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't support Chelsea, eh? <laughs> There's a Chelsea fan there who will fight you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. But, no, but no, I, it's like you, you, you are trying to disrespect, I mean, the London <laughs> club. Oh, no, I mean, it's not disrespect, but I mean, if you are a supporter of... It's Manchester the only London United club that has won the Champions League. Hey, no yes, London I, club has been able to do, do that. Hey, Chelsea yes, fans. You, you, you are talking about... Uh, I do, I do. Are you see? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, it's not easy. But, but look, man, I mean, do you fear that uh, with what Chelsea currently are doing, uh, the form that they are in with, under Thomas Tuchel, they could take that second spot from Manchester United? Uh, well, well, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't see Chelsea in the second spot, honestly. I, I'm confident that Tuchel will lead Chelsea to the top four. But you look at the form that in with Manchester United that in it, it, it's it's very very it's going to be very very difficult honestly, despite having that dwindling kind of form. But I I think that Chelsea making the top four is I mean is is is, is well expected, and I think also Manchester United will play in the top four. But for Chelsea maybe Ted Ted is I I mean Ted Ted fine. But this is football also you know you don't know what will happen. But for me Chelsea is going to make the top four. But as to whether taking up the second spot. I mean, so the second spot to be for United, I mean, okay. Uh, for me. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So let, let's quickly pick a caller from the northern region and then we'll come back to you. Hello, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. My name is Samson. Okay, let's hear you, sir. Uh, yeah, well, I'm seeing that uh, the Chelsea has the reason to go for the top four. Please come again. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, we lost that caller, so you can also call the number to call on your screen uh, there. So, Sami, we're making a point. Yeah, so I'm saying that, I mean, Manchester United are in a great form. You could, you could clearly see that, you could clearly see the work that Tuchel is doing on, on, on these Chelsea boys. But, I mean, we saw Chelsea play Manchester United at Stamford Bridge, and you could clearly see that um, 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 both clubs are, are playing some good football. But, I mean, over the weekend, we saw Manchester, how Manchester United went to the Tihad, and then they beat... I mean, Manchester City. And, and, and that's why I, I think that it's going to be really difficult for, I mean, Manchester United to slip from that second position for Chelsea to take over. Chelsea is definitely mm -hmm. going to play in the top four, but for them to take over Manchester United, I think it's go going to be very, very difficult task for, for, for Tuchel to do that. But I'm very okay. confident that Tuchel is going to lead Chelsea. All to right. Take so, so Sami, you hold on for me. Let me speak to your name, six Samuel from Takra. Hi, Samuel. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? We thank God. Let's hear you. Uh, please, I'm talking about the church league match. Please do, please do. The Champions League. Please do. Chelsea is playing a uh, league today, top thirty. Yeah. And um, a league that you know is a very good opponent, but I think Chelsea is taking the three points. Okay. Because 
Tuchel uh, came in and is getting the confidence in all the players. Tuchel mm -hmm. is on. Tuchel has been unpredictable since he came to Chelsea. Okay. Never knowing the type of lineup you have, mm -hmm. giving the Chelsea players the confidence or the the hope that they can still be in the starting eleven. Mm -hmm. And then in the Champions League too, a lot of people are waiting that Chelsea is not going to do well in the Champions League. Because uh, Atletico Madrid is a good team, and one there is not a good league. Okay. But um, Chelsea, in their form, and as you've seen from Tuchel, Chelsea can play big matches. Because it's made for big matches since Thomas Tuchel came, and it won three and drawn one, and that was against Manchester United. So mm. I'm waiting Chelsea to do one. Okay. All right, so we lost him there. Uh, let's pick another caller. Good morning. Your name and where you calling from? Hello? Okay. Okay, we don't have him. So, uh, look, man. I mean, yes, you also play against West Ham United. Big, big game for Manchester. Manchester. Can you guys win? Because West Ham, Charlie, they are on fire. Yeah, I mean, um, it's actually a very uh, tough one. I saw United against West Ham in the first round. Well, it was a, a, a game of two halves where West Ham dominated the first half and then took the lead. The second half was won by United. I saw United again against West Ham in the FA Cup, but we all saw how difficult it was. I mean, we played 100, um, almost, we played 120 minutes of football before winning that game. So it tells you that West Ham have become a very stubborn side when it comes to playing against United. And let's not forget, there is uh, David Moyes there. And David Moyes knows how to handle clubs like West Ham. It, it's going to be a very difficult one. Last week, West Ham won against Leeds United. They won their, their game 2-0. And they are not far from making it into the top four. Uh, for United, the problem has been um, finishing off games. I mean, they play some good football, but most of their games since losing to uh, Sheffield United has, has, has ended in draw, in draws. They've not lost a game since 27th uh, January, but then most of the games have ended in draws. And okay. so that is, um, quite, that is also a troubling situation for them. But uh, against West Ham, it's going to be very difficult. All right, but guys. since it's going to be played mm. at Old Trafford, I expect United to win. Look, man, thank you very much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. It's all to, uh, to you, Sami. And Kofi, Kofi, are you there? I'm here, Benedict. Charlie? Everything will be fine. Don't worry. Liverpool will bounce back, okay? After <laughs> after this uh, wonderful win against Leipzig with uh, Fabinho, uh, you know, already playing in midfield, and then Kabak as well as uh, Phillips now fitting in very well at centre back. I think everything will be fine, and likely Liverpool can you know finish top four. That's only if uh, West Ham uh, be, be, they start losing games and Liverpool start winning games as well. Is that not so? I think that is. I think that is the hope that once Fabino is restored into midfield, that we see the balance of the team. And um, it was evident against um, Leipzig. It, I think it was even evident in the second half against Fulham when Fabino came on and he had to move into the midfield. So um, I think going forward for the remainder of the games, he should be, he Klopp knows that he should be, he should stick there and then um, Liverpool start winning games again in the Premier League. All right, Kofi, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this morning for joining us uh, from. Your base in London. So that was Kofi Asichwe. You also heard from Lukman Eva Green, Mumuni, and then uh, Samuel Apia. Well, I've got two callers and I'm going to wrap up the show with you guys. Uh, one from Bog Bogoso, right? Hello? Hello? Yes, uh, from Bogoso, right? I, I hope I got the name right. Yes, yeah, Bogoso. Bogoso, Bogoso, Bogoso yeah, your name. <laughs> I said Bogoso. Okay, please, let's hear you. Yeah. I just want to talk about this weekend. Uh, please weekend. do. Please go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, I'm a United fan. Okay. And, uh, to just linger than the West, who has been in Manchester before. Mm -hmm. All you can say is that United is winning this weekend. No okay. doubt about that. We are all right. winning. Okay. But Chelsea, so they should not think of the second spot at all. Okay. It's so the second the spot is for United football. and you are winning. All right, okay, thank yes, you very much. Yes, so, yes. Jay Links, uh, as you mentioned, uh, just lingered, uh, Jay Links, uh, as is uh, popularly known. And then uh, David Moyes are back uh, to Old Trafford. Let, let me pick my last caller. Hi, good morning. He's gone. All right, okay, so thank you very much to all those uh, that called in, and thanks to our guys, uh, Jim Sowa, for joining us earlier. Uh, we heard from Kofi Esitri from London, and then Luke Maneva 
Green Mumuni uh, here in Ghana, as well as uh, Samuel Apia, also in Ghana. I'm better the two. So thanks so much to uh, the guys uh, in here for the production work here, to Joseph and to all of you. Uh, Gabby is lurking around. Uh, I can see I'm producer also here. And to everyone, thank you very much. We are back same time next week. Another exciting edition of the show. Uh, do, remember to join uh, the... The, the guys said uh, tomorrow on Off the Cuff, uh, Sammy Bartels will be here uh, with Farouk Komati Baka and then uh, Yao Obin. I'm out. <laughs>